Good evening, families here in attendance. Tonight, we are offering simultaneous interpretation for our listeners who choose to hear tonight's session in Spanish and in Portuguese. Um, on the screen here, you can see instructions for how we are offering this simultaneous interpretation, and you can access that by clicking the globe icon at the bottom of your screen. We are also going to launch a poll in a moment that's going to ask for your preferred language that you are here to listen to tonight, whether that's English, Spanish, or Portuguese. Tonight, we are um, welcoming two interpreters uh, on screen with us. We have a, an interpreter in Spanish and Portuguese, and we are going to listen to these instructions in Spanish before the session gets started. Buenas noches. El día de hoy tenemos disponibles la opción de eh, español y portugués. Eh, en pantalla podrán ver cómo acceder a la interpretación simultánea en ambos idiomas. Deben hacer clic en el, en el icono que figura abajo de su pantalla con forma de globo y allí podrán seleccionar eh, el español, inglés o portugués. Boa noite, essa reunião está sendo transmitida em inglês, português e espanhol. Na tela você poderá ver as instruções para acessar a interpretação simultânea. Na parte inferior direita da sua tela você poderá ver um ícone de globo. Ao clicar nele você poderá selecionar o idioma que gostaria de ouvir e se quiser ouvir apenas o áudio da interpretação você clica em mutar o áudio original. Boa noite. All right, so the poll has been launched and if our families that are here could just take a moment to complete that poll, I will open the interpretation rooms in the meantime. Mientras tanto, abriré eh, la selección para las encuestas. Los padres pueden seleccionar la opción que prefieren y ahora habilitaré la interpretación. Temos uma votação para que os pais possam selecionar qual é o idioma que querem ouvir e logo após a votação abriremos a sala de interpretação. All right, so our interpretation rooms are open for those choosing to go into those. And Sue, you may take the floor. So hello everyone, I'm Sue Carmona, the principal of Witchcraft Heights Elementary School, and my apologies, we have two dogs who have just decided to enter my room and start playing, so they're like growling at each other. I'm trying to get my husband to get them out, so just ignore the background noise for a minute. Um, so welcome, we are so thrilled to have you come visit virtually our school tonight. Um, we're going to take some time to walk through who we are as a school and as a community. I'm first gonna walk through my screen and the people that you see on our screen right now who are part of our amazing community. Um, and they'll just have to raise their hand because I'm sure you see me in different squares. So um, first I'd like to introduce our assistant principal, Nicole Mateo. And she will be, um, each of us will present a little bit of what we're doing, but at any point, you know, please think of questions or things that you'd like to be brought up and you can address those to us as we go through. Our second person I'd like to introduce is our special education administrator, uh, Bridget Connors. And right below me on my screen is Arabella Luciano, who's our family engagement facilitator. And to my left is one of our kindergarten teachers, Kim McCarthy. And then straight down from me is Allie Brennan, who is one of our City Connect slash um, school counselors. So this is our team for tonight, who will walk through what, um, we, who and what we are as witchcraft. I'll start us off. It'll take us a second. We're gonna pull up our PowerPoint, hopefully. Somebody's gonna pull it up for me, hopefully, or I guess I don't have it up. So if anybody has it who would like to share, that would be perfect. All right. And I'm gonna step away from my screen for two seconds to shut my door so the dogs don't come back in. <laughs> 
Miss Luciana will be navigating the chat, so please feel free to add any questions that you may have throughout the night as we present right there in the chat, and we will have a time at the end of the session to address all questions. So again, just leave any question that you may have right there in the chat. Okay, so we're just in pause mode just as we get our PowerPoint up. I just am having trouble like finding the window. Okay. So you can think of questions and put them in the chat now if you'd like. <laughs> and I can start us off a little bit as we're getting the PowerPoint up. Um, if one thing we can tell you about witchcraft, so we're, we are the largest elementary school in Salem, but we call ourselves the big school that feels small. Um, we are a very tight community in that um, we, you know, our doors are open to everyone and we really work hard and working as an inclusive community. At this point of the school year, we have about 457 students, um, which is um, an excellent number for an elementary school. We are kindergarten through grade five. And for each of those, and I may repeat myself a little bit, but we have four classrooms at each grade. So incoming kindergartners, we have four classrooms um, in um, Kim McCarthy will talk a little bit about that, but at this point we run around about 18 students total ish um, in the upper teens, I should say it kind of fluctuates um, depending on how the year is. So with that in every kindergarten and she will, like I said, will repeat some of this every kindergarten does have a full time um, paraprofessional who works closely with all our kindergarten students. Um, so as students go up, they go through all through, we have uh, a placement procedure as kids go up through grades one through five. So our hope is that once you join the witchcraft community, you stay, your child stays with us all the way through fifth grade. No luck on that. <laughs> For some reason, I don't have sharing permissions like on my Zoom. So I'm just, I had to reload Chrome. Give me one second and I can pull it up. And if you can't, I think I can jump into it too. Um, Kim, do you want to take two seconds while we're waiting for the um, PowerPoint just to give a general overview? I know it is probably going to, I'm probably messing up our slides at this point, but <laughs> is there something? Yeah. yeah, I'm Kim McCarthy. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Witchcraft Heights. I've been there for about 11 years. I'm also a kindergarten um, parent. My son is in kindergarten and my daughter's in second grade. So I can help with any of the parent questions too, as much as I can. Um, we are really lucky this year. Our classes range from 15 to 18 students in each class, which is a really manageable size, especially because we have that two to one ratio with the full day para. Um, our students do a lot of small group work to keep them keep it leveled and tailored to what they need. We do do a social emotional curriculum specific to kindergarten to help with that transition. I know a lot of parents are already anxious for September, but I can tell you, we really do ease them in. Don't don't be stressed, they will be fine. They will be tired in September, but they will be fine. They will have fun. And I see our slide shows up so I can wait and go back into that when we get there. Thanks, Nicole. It was making me like restart my computer to do it. So you're on mute, we, you're on mute. I was so excited to talk. Um, I was gonna say it's a slideshow, there we go. The slideshow is getting itself to load. That was good, at, that was, I was on mute. Um, like I said, so here's a picture of the front of our school. Um, just so you know, the majority of our students come in through the front doors, it, whether they are car drop-off or bus drop-off. Um, 
if you have either um, older students who go to our school or have had friends or family who go to our school, we have a pretty tight routine of when kids come in. So they come in, um, we open our doors at 8.15 and we try to get all kids in seats in their classrooms. School starts at 8.30. But when kids come in, we have an army of staff who are outside welcoming students every morning as they come into the school at those very front doors, um, they walk in and as we have free breakfast for everyone, we offer breakfast for everyone and students are escorted upstairs into their classrooms. Kim will walk through what it looks like for kindergarten, especially on those first days and weeks because it is a little daunting for the little ones, but um, we have a pretty, I think a pretty tight system of really making sure that especially our little ones as they come in, that as they come into this big space, that they feel like they're being um, protected and kind of walked through in order to get to their kindergarten classrooms, which are on the other side of the building. So, um, and at some point, anybody else on our panel, you can tell me to stop talking and jump in because I don't have the slides in front of me and I don't remember which ones I'm a slide, slide do. So this is your kindergarten team. Um, so Kim McCarthy is here. Right across from her on the slides is Kim Hansen, and then Tara Barton on the bottom um, slide, and then Kelly Papaligas. This team, um, all of these teachers, and Kim, you can tell me exactly, have been working at our school at least for five years. At probably least 10. Love, probably <laughs> at least 10. <Yeah. laughs> I think I'm the newest, and it's been 11 years. Um, Kim Hansen and Kelly Papaligas are on year 17. It was Barton's on year 25, I believe, Okay, which is impressive. So, Yep, so definitely seasoned teachers. And this slider is all our, our paraprofessionals, as I mentioned, that every kindergarten teacher has an assigned paraprofessional. Um, and part of that is they also work for the team. So they all support each other just as the teachers do. So um, as we are living still with COVID as part of our lives and as people just are having to be out of school for whatever reason, our um, teachers and our paraprofessionals will share the wealth and help each other out. So we have um, Karen Williamson, um, Carlene Coston, Hillary Grimes, and Lori Frailer is all part of our team. Anybody else want to take over a slide? I can, I can jump in. Um, Nicole's, Nicole's microphone is not letting her unmute. <laughs> Um, so in addition to the classroom teachers, we have a wealth of other staff in the building um, who support in various ways. Um, we have five different um, specialists who are the art teacher, music teacher, physical education, civics, and also STEM. Um, we're lucky enough to have a garden in the center of our school, which is frequently incorporated into our STEM classes, which is phenomenal. Um, we also have a beautiful large library with a librarian there. Um, ML teachers work with students who are identified as multilingual learners. Um, we also provide IEP services as outlined in a student's IEP. Um, and our school counseling staff um, of who Allie is a member works with, uh, they work with students ranging from supporting tier one um, and overall classroom social emotional learning strategies all the way up through um, IEP services as well um, with all the tiers in between too. Um, so this, oops, am I muted? I'm not muted, it's cheapers. Um, hold on clicking at the same time, sorry. So uh, what you're looking at right now is pretty much our um, part of our staff that your students would be working with. You've met a couple of us so far that you've noticed at live here with you right now. Damaris Almonte on your screen is our bilingual secretary. Um, Elaine Bombasi is our school nurse. Um, you've met Ali. Heather Perry is new to our team this year. She is also as, as our City Connects coordinator. Bridget Murphy on the bottom is one of our school adjustment counselors and Nasha Shams is our behavior specialist. Um, and just behavior specialist for witchcraft is new this uh, past school year. We have taken a really, really um, strong stance in looking at proactive ways in looking at behavior and engagement. His um, Nasser's work is really thinking about 
What are the proactive steps we can take when we think about student behavior? Um, we had a very large staff this past summer trained in restorative circles, which is in a nutshell is a, an opportunity that we take during um, our morning meeting time where students pick a topic and or staff pick a topic where every student has a moment to voice their thoughts on it. Um, they actually have like a talking stick that or feather or tool that gets passed around. And it's an opportunity just to open up communication in a way that's respectful and um, honors each voice. And this we do from kindergarten all the way up through fifth grade. We do it with our adults during our own professional development. We have our um, specialist teachers come in and um, lead restorative circles in classrooms. So it's a very um, a somewhat unique, I think, experience that we're doing across our school that I don't know if all schools do. And Nasser Shams is who leads that. He also leads our, um, we have contracted with Playworks, which is a, a recess group that really talks about how do we really engage students in interactive play that's organized and focuses on how do kids socialize during recess and play together versus kind of that parallel play. So that's some of his work. Okay. At Witchcraft, we, uh, our mission and vision, we aim to develop a culture of curious, independent and passionate learners who will build a more connected world by accepting challenges, by valuing each other and growing into their own unique abilities and beyond. We really are focusing this year on building um, independent learners and what does that look like for students to be an independent learner in their season classroom. We want students to be able to engage in learning, be curious about what they are um, working on, being able to ask questions and really doing the cognitive lift. Our vision is for our community to accept challenges. We value each other. We enjoy the productive struggle of learning together and be confident as we learn who we are and, and the world around them. As to the left, right, you can see our school mascot. This year we have adopted through um, one student has graciously um, been able to draw our new mascot and name our mascot. Here to the right, you can meet Jellybean, our school owl mascot. Jellybean comes to all of our magical assemblies that we have at Witchcraft. Our mission and our vision is embedded in all that we do. We plan magical assemblies that go along with our core values and students engage in these values. They um, go with buddy classrooms and do projects that are culturally connected to our community and so forth. Here is our school pledge. It is the acronym of MAGIC. Where the magic happens is at Witchcraft Heights. So M will stand for model and curiosity. A, acting safely. G, give and receive respect. I, include everyone. And C, is to continue to persevere. We say this um, pledge at the beginning of each day. Each Monday, we focus on one core value, reminding students to um, be setting a small goal for themselves throughout the week so that they can um, live up to the magical value. Again, we celebrate all of these parts during our magical assemblies. And also we have magical tickets where students earn magical tickets for using one of these parts of our magical values and going above and beyond. Students can cash in their tickets for magical surprises. Our school-wide rules, these are our rules that we say each and every single day. I am safe, I am respectful, and I try my best. Ms. Carmona mentioned that we do restorative circles, and that is really our approach with behavior as well. You know, behavior is a form of communication. We really try to look at our, the student's behavior at times and go to these, these um, school-wide rules and our core values to remind students in what you were doing, were you safe? In what you were doing, were you being respectful? And how can we move forward so that you can always be the best version of yourself by trying your best? And I think I'm gonna pass it over to Miss McCarthy where she might talk a little bit more about what does it look like to be a kindergartner at Witchcraft? In the picture behind here, you can see that that is our magical assembly where the whole school comes together on a Wednesday, a half day. Our kindergarten students arrive at 815. 
during those first few days, your, te your child's teacher will meet them in the cafeteria. We will give them a lot of time to say goodbye. We will line them up by homeroom, check to make sure they have everything, do that one last big goodbye, and then walk them to their classroom. Over the few first days, we allow you to walk your child first into the cafeteria. Then we ask you to get them up to the door. And eventually you'll be dropping them off like all the other students in the front at our kiss and go lane. We start the first few days with meeting them in the cafeteria and then eventually release that responsibility back to them to walk themselves up to the classroom after they've been familiar with where to go. Along that walk, there'll be tons of different staff members that they will know, handing them a breakfast bag and greeting them saying hello. So no one gets lost, everybody makes it. And we make sure to wait until they're ready to walk up by themselves. Every student at Witchcraft is given breakfast for free and lunch for free. When we greet them in the classroom, they finish their breakfast and we start our day with morning meeting. We use two programs. Um, one is restorative circles that we talked about a little bit and one is caring schools community. And those give us some greetings and some way to make everyone feel um, heard and accepted and um, comfortable right in the morning. That's also when we go over the calendar, count the days we've been in school and talk about the schedule for the day. It's a great way to anchor our learning, have everybody ready with, for the expectations for the rest of their day and to get comfortable and say hello. After morning meeting, we usually do our literacy block. All of our subjects, um, ELA and math, are done in a workshop model, where we start with the teacher standing in front of the class, giving a short focus lesson on the rug. Some guided practice where the children get a chance to practice the skill being taught that day. And then we like to push them out into either math or literacy centers. During those centers, we are so lucky to have our parents. They will run a small group. The kindergarten teacher will run a small group. There might be another technology group where students are working on the literacy program core five. So another group might be in their MyView workbooks, doing a page. Another group might be independently reading. And then we shift. That way I'm seeing your child in a small literacy group every day. That group is level to what they need. If they're reading really at a higher level, I can challenge them where they are. If they need extra practice of a skill, we can challenge them where they are. We also build assessments into that time. So we're always moving the curriculum to what your child needs. We end our literacy workshop with a group share time. Our units for literacy are really connected to science and social studies. We're very lucky in that way. Um, they're really learning about the world around them while they're learning to read. Our first unit is going places, talking about what makes a place special. Then we'll have a living together unit all about plants and animals and what living things need to grow. Tell me a story is the unit we just finished up now where they're exposed to tons of different genres of text. and They get to write a whole story about what was their favorite, write their opinion piece. If Next, we'll go just on. Sorry, Mrs. McCarthy, if you could just slow down just a little bit. That'd be oh, cool. sure. Sorry. Thank you. Our next unit is the then and now unit, where students will learn about the past. And finally, our last unit is outside my door, where we learn about the weather and different parts of nature. We have that small group time built right into that ELA block. It's really a valuable time where students are reading and writing and decoding in a small group. Those groups are leveled depending on what your child needs. It's a great time to have good conversations about the books that they're reading and the text that they love to build their comprehension, improve their fluency, and give them choice in what they're reading and a way to express themselves. They really value that small group time and as teachers, we, we do too. Later in the day, we have math. Our core curriculum is called Eureka Squared. It's supported by an online um, program called ST Math. Children love ST Math. You can see the penguin in the corner. Um, their name is Gigi, and the ch children will follow Gigi through a lot of puzzles and mazes. They don't even realize that they're learning while playing a game that they would feel like would be a, a game just for fun. Our math is broken down into six big sections. The first section is all about count counting cardinality. They want to learn their number sense more, less, counting, sequencing. Next, we do a unit on shapes, 2D flat and 3D solid shapes. We just finished our unit in comparison, weight, length, height, and comparing numbers with more or less. The next two units are about composition and decomposition, addition and subtraction, putting numbers together, putting shapes together, taking them apart. And finally, we end the year with some place value foundational skills, we learn about teen numbers and counting to 100. Your child will have a chance every day to go outside for recess at least once a day. Sometimes in the afternoon, we might take them out for a second time. 
if it's beautiful out like today was. Um, recess is so important and valued at our school. It's a time for them to see students from other classrooms, to make some connections with kids that are not right in their homeroom. They can explore nature, good exercise, get some fresh air, and use our playground. Your child's kindergarten para that is there with them full time is the person that takes them to lunch into recess. So they're always with a familiar person that they're very close to, and they never feel like they're being handed off to someone that they don't know. Um, Kim, can I just cut in just so families know that um, if you haven't heard, we're actually on the docket to get a brand new playground, um, which at this point in time, it looks like ribbon cutting is going to be in December of 2023 of this year. We're fingers crossed that we're going to actually open up our brand new playground for the first day of school in September. Um, but it is the biggest capital project that the Salem Public Schools is, I guess, petitioning for um, with the city of Salem to be launched this year. So we're pretty excited about that. Kim, you're muted. Thank you. Um, also, your children will be doing a science or social studies. We teach those in bends. The science units are really about nature. They're very inquiry-based. Every lesson is started with your child asking a question, and then they search for their own understanding by asking more questions, researching, and a lot of hands-on um, activities. We're really lucky that our school chose to have STEM as a specialist. I think all Salem schools have gym, music, and art. And we got to pick a few more to add to our, um, to our school. And we really valued STEM and science as an important part of their understanding of the world around them. And this brings them back to STEM in such a nice way. They, whatever we learn about in our classroom, they're also learning about in STEM and they're able to do some hands-on exciting labs. When we're not doing science, we're doing social studies. Our social studies is tied to civic, civic duty. We use a program called Discovering Justice. The first unit they talk about how to be a citizen of witchcraft types, what it looks like to be a kindergarten student and a nice kind classmate. We do a lot of history and shared traditions in one big unit and also sprinkle throughout the year. They're really spending time learning about other cultures. It's their first time sometimes being around kids that aren't just like them and we give them a lot of opportunity to talk and share their own traditions and their own families, um, what their own families value. We also do some geography and talk about places near and far and use globes and maps. We end every day with a free choice time. Um, we were mentioning before that during morning meeting, we use restorative justice circles and we use caring school community to really talk about social skills. We also have a great online program called Quaver that we use to, to teach things like sharing, parent taking, um, accepting difference, having a, a friendly debate. During free choice time, we do a lot of pause, stop and think, where we'll have the whole class stop, talk about a problem we just saw happen between two peer, peers during free choice, and they work together to figure it out. It's kind of like guided play. So the teacher is there to watch them as they go through these play stations, using their imagination, and very interacting with each other, but it's guided and we're there to help them navigate social situations using the curriculum that we talked about during that day at morning meeting. At Witchcraft, we have many specialists. We have our standard art, which is by Ms. Officer, music by Mr. Milner, and PE by Mr. Fritz. In addition, we are the only elementary school in the city of Salem that offers a STEM class as Mrs. McCarthy was telling you previously, where students are able to do science, technology, engineering, and math all embedded into one. With a little bit of focus on our garden, we have that beautiful space in the middle of our school that um, we connect with many community resources. We've connected with the YMCA during the summer times to help support the PTO wraps around and help support our garden. And then we have connected to other community um, places as well to help support. And in addition, we have civics. We're the only school in the city of Salem to have civics. I believe um, we were one of the first ones to kind of adopt in the state of Massachusetts, civics education for kindergarten through fifth grade. You may have heard it 
more so in the upper grades, but we really value students understanding their community and the world around them and their place beyond the front door of our school and who they are as a person. So we are really excited about that. This year, our upper grades, grades four and five, were invited to participate in an, um, an equity voice project that has been led by Mr. Collins and connected to the equity imperative initiative. Students are able to take on um, a valuable problem that they believe that the world um, has and that think about ways in which we can move ourselves as our voice to be able to help change in the world. And that is really supported with our restorative circle work. And I'll go right back to um, Ms. McCarthy and she talk to you about dismissal. Your child will be walked out to you by their actual classroom teacher. We walk them to a designated spot out front. They have to give us a high five and we either help board them into the car of the kiss and go lane or hand them off to a grown up who is, uh, will walk up to get them. If they're a bus student, we'll walk them right to their bus location, hand them off to the other adult there that runs their bus. Or if they go to the school YMCA, we drop them off at the door of the YMCA. Dismissal can be stressful for parents thinking about it at first, but we have very clear routines that the children will come accustomed to right away. And don't worry, we have an awesome car um, line that you will be accustomed to very quickly uh, upon entering Witchcraft. All communication will go out through Parent Square, and it is a simple procedure of coming up one way, staying in your car, pick your child is called, and then you get right, the child gets right in the car. Parents, parents that we value communication. We have red, a red folder system. So each classroom actually has, and each student has a red folder. That is where communication, homework gets sent out, paperwork gets sent out to you. Um, we also have a value Parent Square as another resource. Parent Square is where all of our communication will come out. We do still put some things of high value in paper form, but a majority of our notices will go home via Parent Square. You have options. Um, we send out weekly parent weekly snapshots from the classroom. Miss um, McCarthy can speak a little bit more to that in just a second. We also send out um, school communication. So Miss Arabella here on the screen sends out a weekly update of what is happening at Witchcraft to get parents to get engaged. We send out the weekly calendar, what's for lunch. And then that is me, the main communication system to really get a hold of your classroom teacher. They're able to share photos on there and so forth. It's a really interactive um, site that you can be able to interact with the class. And then of course our email system. Kim, do you wanna talk a little bit about weekly updates? Sure, the weekly update is sent to you via Parent Square. It's a time for us to tell you what we did that week. So when your child comes home and you say, what did you do? And they say, I don't know. You can say, ha okay, I know you did this. And we even put questions at the bottom that you can ask them to get them to talk more about their learning. We also put little blurbs about what we did in each subject, some important reminders of upcoming information, lots of photos, some snapshots of some projects. We usually feature a student every week where if it's your child that gets to bring in a show and tell from home, fill out a little interview, so that everyone around them gets to know them. Um, it's just a very cute way to keep up with what your child's doing at school. Awesome. Can we pass it back to Ms. Carmona to talk about what makes Witchcraft special? Why, thank you. Okay, so um, we think we are, you know, the most special school in Salem. So definitely as you look at um, our hashtag magic, we have a very clear vision and mission for our school. Um, one of our biggest pieces when we think about, we have three big rocks and one of those is really thinking about what does instruction look like for all students? And in that we prioritize small group instruction or small group learning. So as Kim had mentioned, depending on where your student, how your student is growing into their, um, into their academic world, it, most of that really deep instruction happens in small group instruction. Um, we are a strong data-based school. So we are looking at student live data constantly and consistently um, across all the domains, whether it's content, social, emotional, um, attendance, health. So we're constantly looking at data to make sure that we are really prioritizing every individual student's needs. And finally, we really, as um, noted, we think about civics instruction and civic duty, having 
one having a civics special, which is, um, as mentioned, the only one, only civics class in Salem and possibly in Massachusetts. Um, so very big and really teaching what does it mean to be civic minded in our civic duty and on top of that also our STEM special that does not also, um, we don't see those across all our schools in Salem. So a couple more things that make us super special, um, being an inclusive community and um, we, Bridget, I'll have you talk just a minute about what our ASD programming looks like and what is our inclusivity really looks like as a school. As I mentioned, coming on as coming as we started this today, is that our doors are open for everyone, and we really pride ourselves in as any child and family walks through the door. How do we support the child and family and make you part of our community? Student choice and student voice. Um, we really also work towards, especially in the classrooms, thinking about what does academics look like so that kids also have choice in their learning. So you can see in that middle slide, the children are going up to, it's hard to see, but it's actually a choice board, um, probably during their literacy block. It also happens during their math block where they may do, they may sit down and work on ST math, or we have another program called Lexia, which is literacy based. They might be at the teacher table. They might be working on a skills-based game. So there's time in the day where students are really guiding their goals for that day. And then community connections um, is the very first picture. You saw we had a beautiful mural on um, an outside wall. We really work very closely. We have a very strong PTO and the community around us thinking about how do we really create a school that is vibrant and alive and represents the community around us. Um, with that, we have our school garden, which is plunked right in the middle of our school. Um, and we are really excited to regenerate the garden as COVID kind of stalled it a little bit over these past couple of years, but um, we are connected with, um, the community gardens throughout Salem and really supporting what does community gardening look like. And we also connect with Salem South Coast Watch, knowing that we live here on the coast, learning that happens in, that can happen in our natural environment right into the classroom. So they have a lot of traveling programs that we connect with. Um, you may see around the city of Salem, some of the store cover, the um, drain covers have been painted over. That is part of the programming with Salem South Coast Watch as students learn to, a little bit more about Salem's watershed and their direct effect on that. We also partner with Change is Simple out of Beverly, where they do a lot of our science learning right into the classroom. We also have Read Science um, funding, where the Read Science Fund sends our students on multiple field trips throughout the year. We have been blessed for our community to be able to go out to Appleton Farm, where each grade level has visited for a different reason. And that has been really connected with Essex Tech. So a lot of community connections for learning. What else makes us special is we give back to the planet with our STEM program and our community garden. And we have adopted the restorative circles. So again, in all spaces of our classroom, students are engaging in a restorative circle at least twice a week. More teachers have adopted it and are going full time. The idea is that by next year, we will have this will be our main part of our beginning of our day. We run a lot of restorative circles for peer mediation when um, students are having disconnects with their peers or and if, if something has happened or another student needs to repair the relationship, we do use a restorative circle. Um, we have a calming room, or we also like to call it just the meeting space. And we do some peer mediations in there where it's just a calm space, um, comfortable furniture for students so that you know, our students can feel a little bit more comfortable to be vulnerable and really acknowledge what I may have done to make another human feel uncomfortable or unwelcomed at a time and how I'm going to work on repairing the relationship. And last, I don't know if Ms. L would like to talk a little bit um, about how to register your child for kindergarten. Yes, hi. So I'm the family engagement facilitator. I am the person that helps out with connections with the school. If you're looking to connect with the teacher, having you know some difficulties getting some sort of like signing up for parent square. I'm also in charge of that. I'm the person to contact. Um, you can contact me through email, which is a Luciano um, at salemk12.org or 
through my phone number, my work cell, which is 781-771-7153. I also help with online registration. You can give me a call and I can also help direct you that way. And the way we are registering actually this year is through online. If you go to our main website, which is www.salemk12.org and you go under families or early childhood um, tab, you can see where it says online um, registration. And the way you do have to create an Aspen account. Aspen is our portal that where we have our contact information, including your child's grades that way. So we strongly, that is definitely a platform to register, but we strongly also recommend parents putting in a password that you'll remember. Documents that you will need to um, register. Your, um, once you register online, you do have to submit paperwork to PIC, which is PIC at SalemK12.org, P-I-C at SalemK12.org, and you will need two proofs of addresses. Um, here listed, we have either a lease, a, some sort of bill in your name, um, the parent's ID, the proof of child's age, which is usually the birth certificate or a passport, and immunization records, and the latest physical that you have. And if your child has an IEP or a 504 plan, we also recommend you turning that in into the Parent Information Center also. And these are some of the deadlines that we have in terms for registration. The first registration for sibling um, choice is February 27th. And then we have the batch one kindergarten registration is March 20th. And the next batch is June, June 26th. And you will be getting an email confirmation as to what school you are assigned from PIC. Excellent, thank you. So these are some important dates to really um, make sure that you're aware of. Sibling preference is, the deadline is um, February 27th, which is what, a week and a half away. All righty, so now it's an opportunity for questions. So some of the questions that people have in um, the Q&A section was, are kindergartners given homework and how much homework and what kind of homework? Ms. McCarthy, take it away. Um, we don't give traditional homework at this age level. We don't make them go home and do a piece of paper and pen every day. We do send home a copy book. We copy a book onto paper and we send that home for them, for them to read with you and practice the skills they learned at school. We also send home um, a sight word card every week so that they're building their words that they can fluently read without sounding out, just like kind of putting those to memory. Once a month, we ask them to do a home engineering project that connects to either science or math or social studies or reading. And that's more of a fun art project that you can do as a whole family. And it's something that students love to share back in their classroom. The homework is never daunting. If it ever becomes a problem, they don't wanna cut out the sight word. They don't wanna read with you, just stop. We're their teacher. We want you to enjoy reading with your child. The best thing you can do to them for them is still just to read to them. We send home lists of questions that you could ask them as you're reading those bedtime books together to really build their comprehension. But we do think they do a lot of learning during the day. We don't wanna push them too hard at night. Okay, the next question is, does the school day start begin at 8.30? It's listed at 8.30 online, but, we, but 8.15 was mentioned tonight. Yes, the school day begins at 8.30. However, we open our doors at 8.15. We are staffed with people outside greeting students and each staff member has an assigned space throughout the school. So if your child moves through the building to get to their space, they will be um, in a welcoming space with adults. 8.15 so that students can get um, from the car, or from the bus and to the classroom while also grabbing a quick breakfast. So we do open the doors 15 minutes early and then we would love all students in seats by 8.30. The next question is, how long is recess for and how much time is given for lunch? 
We have 40 minutes for lunch and recess. Kindergarten usually does about 50 minutes because they take a little bit longer to move through the building. As they get a little quicker and more up in the grades that we do do 20 minutes of recess and 20 minutes of lunch. Is free choice offered every day? How much time is given? Yes, we do do free choice every day. Um, at the beginning of the year, it's a longer block. As the learning increases and we need to spend more time reading and writing and math, we do shorten that up. I'd say today was about 20 minutes. The kids do get a lot out of that time. They have that routine really clearly set up that they know what, how to get their toys, how to put them away. So that every day they do end the day with about 20 minutes of choice time. We follow that up with a read aloud to calm everybody back down. And that's how we end our day. And our last question is, my child has an anaphylactic um, allergy. Who do I contact to set up a 504? So 504s are run by the school adjustment counselors. Um, the allergy should be noted to the nurse who can then notify the appropriate people in the building of the student's allergies and restrictions that they would may have. That might be a good segue for Allie Brennan to come on and introduce herself. All right, hi. So, um, so yeah, so as the counselor, I uh, manage our 504s. Um, we just need proof documentation of the diagnosis. Um, so you could send that in first day um, and then we would uh, convene a 504 eligibility meeting. Um, there's also uh, medical plans, which might be more appropriate depending on what it is, but we would decide that in that 504 meeting. And those were all our questions we had on our Q&A section. All right, excellent. So at this point, um, we are done with our little Witchcraft Town Hall introduction of who we are as a community. Um, as you know that this is being recorded, so you can definitely go back and re-watch re it, but of, the best is also just to reach out to us. And the best person to reach out to is Arabella Luciano. Um, as our family engagement facilitator, but at any point you can um, call the school. We There is somebody on staff inside answering phones from about 7.30 to four every day, um, except next Monday um, and possibly for most of next week, but as we're on vacation. But at any point you can either give the school a call, please call to set up any type of tour. We are so excited to, to have you tour the school um, get an idea of what it really looks like inside. We'd love to just talk more about our school because as you can see, we'd just love to keep talking about it. Um, and then to reach out to either Kim McCarthy as our lead kindergarten teacher or anybody in this, um, on this panel, if you have any questions. And we look forward to seeing you all soon and are really excited to have your child in our school. I just want to chime in real quick. I did forget to mention we are having school tours officially. You can always set up any time, but we are having group tours the week of March 6th and also the week, the week of March 13th. And we have two tour times, one in the morning, which is at 930 and one at one in the afternoon. So just feel free to call the main office, which is 978-741-1271 or my cell phone again, which is 781-771-7153. All right, with that, our presentation is over. We hope you got plenty of information to come join our community. If not, like I said, please reach out to us at any time as we would love to share more about our wonderful witchcraft community. So we hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, families, for joining us. And we look forward to seeing everyone soon. Have a great night, everyone.